We're going to talk for a minute about stress and strain. Now, we use those words very casually in our everyday speech, but they have very specific meanings when it comes to science and the mechanics of behavior of materials. So tectonic forces cause deformation, and stress is a force. Remember from your physics class that a force has magnitude and direction. So when you talk about stress, you need to talk about the kind of stress, the direction of stress, and its magnitude. And geologically speaking, there really are three that we're concerned with. There is compression, which is a squeezing stress. There's tension, which is a stressing, stretching or pulling apart. And there's shearing, which is a sliding stress. Now, you know this already from plate tectonics, right? Because you know that there are three predominant kinds of plate boundaries. You can either have plates coming together or pulling apart or sliding past each other. Same thing here. You're talking about tectonic forces deforming rocks in those same three motions, compression, tension, and shear. Now, strain is the response to stress. It was what happens to the rock when you put it under stress. This is a sequence of four experiments from the Rock Deformation Lab at Oklahoma University. And you can see in the first cylinder on the left, that's the undeformed cylinder. And then we have one that broke by cracking, right? So that's brittle behavior. It's breaking. In the middle, we have uh, maybe a little bit of cracking, but more flowing, more ductile behavior. And on the right, a fully ductile uh, deformation of that rock. Now, it's maybe a little bit hard to think about rocks as flowing, as deforming ductally, but they do. Under high pressure and temperature, rocks can behave very much like silly putty. So two predominant responses to stress, ductile and brittle behavior. So you can see then that there are six potential end members for the kinds of deformation that you might have. You can have compression, tension, and shearing stresses behaving in either ductile or brittle ways. So see if you can pause this recording and make a little chart for yourself and draw a picture. Make one or two layers, let's say, of rock, and then think about squeezing them and what would happen if the rock layers behaved ductily? What would happen if they behaved brittily when you squeezed them? Then do the same thing for stretching them or for sliding them past each other. Take a minute or two to do that. Now maybe you came up with something that looks like this. So compressive features, tensional features, and shearing features that you might see in rocks. When you compress something and it behaves ductily, it will fold. When it behaves brittily, it will break and form a fault where the rocks are squeezed together and one side's pushed up. When you pull something apart, then the ductile behavior will be stretching and thinning, and the faulting will be stretching apart and dropping down. And when you provide a shearing stress, then you can bend something in a horizontal plane, or you can make a strike-slip kind of fault. 